Hi, I'm Janelle. In this video, we briefly overview and offer practical applications of several racial identity development models and theories. We ground our understanding of these concepts in the fact that race is a social construct, but also impacts social experiences and carries political implications. Hi, I'm Jake. The first model we'll cover is the racial and cultural identity development model. In 2003, David Sue and Daryl Wing Sue revised the minority identity development model to be the now called racial and cultural identity development model. Perla's college experience will help us understand the model's five stages. Conformity. Perla's entire family immigrated from the Dominican Republic just before she was born, and she's the first to attend college. On move-in day, her monoracial white identifying roommate struggled pronouncing her name. Perla started going by Pearl to fit in with her white roommate, white teachers, and white friends. Dissonance. In her third year at Activities Fest, Perla noticed a new club, Unido, an Afro-Latinx affinity space. Although they met at the same time as Outdoors Club, a club she'd heard great things about, Perla was interested in meeting more people who looked like her. Resistance and Immersion. Perla loved her new friends in Unido and loved hearing them say her name correctly. By the second semester of her junior year, she stopped going by Pearl altogether. Her roommate, who she'd known for almost three years now, was confused about her new name and insisted on calling her Pearl. Perla told her one day, if you can't learn my name, you don't deserve to be my friend. Introspection. Rather than focusing her energy on correcting white people, Perla spent more time learning about her own Afro-Latina roots. She ran for Unidos executive board and became La Presidenta for her fourth and final year in college. To her surprise, her roommate came to the pinning ceremony. After the event, she hugged her and said, Felicidades, Perla. Synergistic articulation and awareness. As La Presidenta, Perla was able to lead collaborative programs and initiatives with other identity-based clubs, affinity space clubs, and even outdoors club. The next model we'll cover is the Cross and Fagan Smith's model of black identity development. This 2001 model uses a lifespan approach to account for racialized experiences during childhood. Original black identity development models assume black folks enter adulthood with no understanding of their blackness. That's untrue. Amelie's life and legacy helps us understand the six sectors of the lifespan model. Infancy and childhood. Amelie was born into a loving family with his mothers and two older twin brothers. They went to church every weekend on Sunday, and once a year, they traveled down to North Carolina to their annual family reunion. This was a tradition since long before Amelie was aware of his family's black identity. Pre-adolescence. By the age of eight, Amelie was well-versed in the importance of his blackness. His mothers and extended family members imparted a high race salience by the ways they uplifted black culture around him. Adolescence. At 15, Amelie continued to authenticate his black identity by starting to develop his own personally created self-concept. He skipped out on the family reunion this year to attend the Student Diversity Leadership Conference. At the following year's reunion, Amelie walked his younger cousins through a social justice workshop that he created himself. Early adulthood. Amelie has maintained a high race salience and has been taught to reject internalized racism. However, white media has shown him negative ideas and stereotypes about being black for his entire life. Overall, he maintains a healthy black identity through college and into grad school. Adult Negrescence. There are four stages of Cross's original Negrescence model, which represent the, quote, process of becoming black, end quote. Pre-encounter, encounter, immersion, immersion, and internalization. Pre-encounter refers to the internalized racism Amelie carries. The encounter stage is represented by the microaggressions he faces as an applicant for jobs with an African name. This is a turning point for Amelie as he develops feelings of anti-whiteness. As those feelings evolve into pro-blackness, Amelie is in the immersion-immersion stage. Finally, internalization occurs as Amelie establishes a balanced sense of what it means to be black. Negrescence Recycling. Unfortunately, after landing his dream job, Amelie continues to experience traumatic race-related issues. Each time, he reflects on and closely examines his identity. He still goes to the annual family reunions and shares stories with his cousins about racist coworkers and unjust systems. Amelie reaches a complex and multidimensional understanding of his own blackness and his own black identity and shares that wisdom with his two children. 
The next model we'll discuss is Roe, Bennett, and Atkinson's white racial consciousness model. This 1994 white racial consciousness model was born in response to Helms' earlier white identity development model. Roe, Bennett, and Atkinson had four major concerns with earlier models. Firstly, they misrepresented some sort of parallel between the ways white people and non-white people experience racial identity. Secondly, earlier models didn't focus on development so much as white racial attitudes towards non-white people. Thirdly, white racial identity development models propose an unverified linear progression through whiteness. And finally, they fail to acknowledge the racial groups outside of and between white and black. White racial consciousness is the awareness of one's white identity. Achieved white racial consciousness is the acceptance of whiteness, whereas unachieved is the denial or dismissal of whiteness. There are four types of attitudes that demonstrate achieved white racial consciousness. Dominative Danny avoids interactions with people of color and uses racial slurs. Conflictive Kyle claims to be colorblind and thinks equality has already been achieved. Reactive Randy organizes Black Lives Matter protests, but only ever recruits white speakers. He thinks he's saving black people. Integrative Eileen knows she lives in a racialized society and actively seeks to dismantle white supremacy. There are three types of attitudes that demonstrate unachieved white racial consciousness. Avoidant Anne only talks about race in her mandatory diversity course, and even then it's like pulling teeth. Dependent Devin is aware of his white identity, but doesn't believe in white privilege. And finally, Dissident Duke is open to conversation about race, but doesn't feel connected to racial knowledge in any meaningful way. This next theory is Fredman and Gallego's model of Latina and Latino ethno-racial orientations. It has six different lenses for how Latinx people may see themselves. Each of these orientations can be seen through Francesca's journey. Francesca is from a predominantly white area and her family is of Mexican descent. She's just starting college and choosing which clubs to join and forming social connections. White identified. Francesca identifies as white and chooses to be with white friends and peers. She actively avoids the Latinx student group and any cultural events on campus because she has no connection to her Mexican background and grew up surrounded by people with negative views and stereotypes of Latinx people. Undifferentiated slash denial. Francesca does not see race as important. She doesn't feel strongly towards Latinx or white identities and focuses on herself as an individual, deciding to join the debate club. Latino as other. Francesca does not self-identify as white or Latinx and doesn't have much awareness of her own cultural background, but she does feel some connection to other POC who she meets on campus. Subgroup identified. Francesca finds other students who also have Mexican backgrounds and is able to learn more about her Mexican culture through engaging with them. When asked about her racial identity, she identifies as Mexican, not Latinx. Latino identified. With the encouragement of her friends, Francesca decides to join the Latinx student organization on campus. She finds many commonalities between her and the other members and learns about the broader issues facing the Latinx community as a whole. She now identifies with the Latinx community as well. Inspired by her involvement with the Latinx student organization, Francesca also engages with the larger BIPOC coalition on campus, attending their multicultural events and programs on campus. Kim's Asian American racial identity development model describes the five stages in which Asian Americans come to terms with their racial identity. We can see this progression from my own experience. Ethnic awareness. Janelle and her family immigrated from the Philippines to the United States when she was very young. She grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood. Janelle's parents and family speak Tagalog at home and cook Filipino food, so Janelle is aware that she is Filipina. She interacts with her white neighbors and sometimes notices that she is different, but feels neutral about it. White identification. As she goes through school, a couple of Janelle's classmates laugh at how she mispronounces words because of her accent. Another girl asks to see what she brought for lunch and yells, gross. Janelle feels embarrassed and tells her parents that she will only speak English from now on and only wants regular sandwiches for lunch. No Filipino food. She tries her best to fit in with her white friends, or at least not get called out for being different. Awakening to social political consciousness. Janelle goes to a diverse college campus and meets more Asian American friends. She also attends more cultural and identity-based events and learns more about the Asian American experience and racism. 
She connects her experience growing up to racism and being one of the few POC in her school and town. Redirection to Asian American consciousness. Chanel asks her parents about the Philippines and connects more with her culture through food, movies, and relearning their language. She starts sharing Filipino food with her friends and feels more positive about identifying as Asian and Filipina. Incorporation. Janelle dedicates her education through research and writing to learn more about Asian American experiences and reflecting on her own experiences. She also finds ways to connect with other communities of color and learn more about other cultures through cuisine, events, education, and research. Perry Horse's model of American Indian racial identity is grounded in the development of individual and group consciousness of indigenous peoples, which also spans across generations. Indigenous identity development is historically tied to the legal and political issues surrounding native communities and preservation of their culture. There are five themes of consciousness according to this model. Knowledge of native language and culture. Validity of one's genealogical heritage, which includes tribal history and teachings. Adopting a worldview that respects the traditions and philosophical values of indigenous ways. The extent to which individuals see themselves as indigenous or Native American people. And one status as a member of an officially recognized tribe. Ren's ecological theory of mixed race identity development uses the person, process, context, time model to frame the experiences of mixed race people to make sense of their racial identity. The person component includes family background and heritage, extent of cultural knowledge, degree of experience with individuals of one's own heritage and other cultural backgrounds, and physical appearance. The process component centers engagement in one's environment or context. The context component looks at different settings, including microsystems, such as student organizations, mesosystems, such as campus culture, exosystems, such as college policies and class curriculum, and microsystems, such as societal perception of specific identities. These all influence identity development. The time component considers the socio-historical context like the debates around racial categories in the 2000 census and changes in identity development over time. There are also five fluid identity patterns that mixed race individuals may use depending on the context. Monoracial, for example, white. Multiple monoracial, for example, white and black. Multiracial, such as biracial or mixed. Extraracial, which is an identity outside of the traditional U.S. racial categories or refusing to identify with any racial category, and situational, which is the shifting of racial identity in different contexts.